Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. A very good morning and we have flown yesterday from Australia to India in Delhi. We stayed overnight in this hotel in uh, Delhi, very close to the airport called D Capital. And it is again next morning, about 6 in the morning now. And we are leaving for Jaisalmer. So friends, join us in our travel to Jaisalmer with us. And guess what? As usual. Hi. And I got a haircut. Yeah, you look cute. No, I don't. So let's start. The distance from Delhi to Jaisalmer is about 756 kilometers and the travel time is around 14 hours. And now we have come down to a food court called Old Rao Hotel. And we have ordered some chole bhature, uh, some noodles and uh, dosa. All Indian this time. Enjoying the Indian food rather. And as you can see, Taking in. Is it good? Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. And the India trip is incomplete without a masala chai. Chole bature, some sushi, hakanoos, and one more dosa again. After a big brunch, now we are back on the roads on our way to Jess and me. And please don't look at me, I'm looking horrible. Hi, Hi. And after a long day of travel, we are at our hotel, the Chaki Dhani Palace Hotel. The hotel really looks gorgeous at night with all the lights on. So let's go in and check out our room. And as you enter the room, the toilet is right in front and then we have a sitting area over here where Neil is relaxing and a double bed and they have given us an extra bed, a small dressing area or a study table over there and again some sitting here. Nice and compact room. I like the ceiling over here. And right after check-in, we hit the dining room for the dinner buffet. We were really hungry and uh, had some good time uh, spending a quality time with the family. I'm almost ready for the day and now actually we plan to go and have our breakfast as uh, the breakfast timing is from 7 to 10 uh, once i come back i need to do something about my hair it looks a little weird right now yeah so see you in the breakfast buffet And finally, I'm ready for the day. Uh, you just saw how frizzy my hair is. Now, it looks a bit more normal. Uh, what I'm used to rather. So, let's go. First, we are planning to visit Patwoki Haveli. And then the famous uh, fort of Jaisalmer, the Shonar Kela, as Satyajit Ray calls it. And now we are in the Golden City. Uh, I have heard that uh, the it is mainly the yellow stones which they use to build the buildings. Uh, and uh, since the color is yellow, so supposedly the Golden City got its name from there. Yes, what are you staring um, for? There are so many goats and animals here. Mm. There are so many monkeys as well. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit it's something scary. very new for a Nikki because she hasn't been into Indian roads so much. And now we are at the Patwoki Haveli. 
just look at the architecture my goodness it definitely talks about the glamorous past it had and we have hired a guide to show us around we felt that in order to see the whole five havelis within the limited time this was the best option and it was overly crowded so definitely because we are in a hot season for this place Patwoki Haveli was constructed by Guman Chand Patwa, a wealthy Jain merchant. The construction started in 1805. The Patwas were the prominent traders who dealt with gold, silver and precious stones. As time progressed and as he made profit in trading, he decided to create five separate Havelis for his son in the same complex. Due to its unique and distinct sections, it is also known as the Mansion of the Brocade Merchants. The Havelis are entirely made from yellow sandstone, lending it a timeless charm. The architecture of the Patwoki Haveli is a fusion of Rajputana and Mughal styles, showcasing intricate craftsmanship, delicate carvings and horned balconies. Part of the Haveli is cut into a museum that offers visitors a glimpse into the history and culture of Jaisalmer. The museum displays artifacts, photographs and memorable items providing insight into the Haveli's past and the lives of the Patwa family. And now we are here at a shop very close to the Patwoki Haveli. I wanted to specifically check out some wall hangings and table runners which I definitely purchased from here. Rajasthani handicraft is mainly famous for patchworks. The wall hangings are made from vintage hand embroidered patches. The rural Rajasthani women create this unique designs at home. They are environment friendly and recycled product. I would suggest definitely not to miss out on this. And now we are on our way to visit the famous Jaisalmer Fort. And now we are at the famous Jaisalmer Fort or the so called Shonar Kela. It is one of the very few living forts in the world and almost one fourth of the old city's population still resides within the fort. The fort was built by King Rawal Jaiswal, the Rajput ruler in 1156. The place we visited first inside the fort was the Jain temple. Jain traders were the most prosperous people in Jaisalmer back then. They were rich, wealthy and deeply religious people who built temples. What is striking about this temple is their magnificent architecture and intricate carvings. In this fort, you will find seven Jain temples and they all are connected with each other through gates and corridors. All are devoted to the Jain Tithankaras. Being a Bengali, we couldn't miss out on Mukul's house from the very famous Bengali movie Shonar Kella by Satyajit Ray. This house was used for the movie and henceforth remained as it is. We are entering the King and Queen's Palace in Shonar Kella. Now we are inside the Maharaja's palace. It is a beautiful example of Rajasthani architecture and design. The exterior and the interior has all the intricate carvings you would expect from this region of India. Constructed entirely from sandstone, it has a lovely golden glow during the day. There is also an audio guide that gives excellent commentary with information about the fort and the Maharajas of Jaisalmer. The Maharaja's palace was built in 12th century and was originally intended to be a royal residence. The palace was later expanded and renovated by the subsequent rulers of Jaisalmer and today stands as a testament to the city's rich cultural heritage. Both the King and Queen's Palace has been converted into a museum which displays artifacts like weapons and clothing used and photographs of the rulers providing an insight into the past.
you get some of the best views from the terrace of this palace. Now, Next on our list is Bara Bagh. Bara Bagh, which in Hindi means Grand Garden, is a garden complex located about 6 kilometers north of Jaisalmer. This has been constructed by the Maharajas of the Jaisalmer state in the 18th, 19th and early 20th century. The memorial chhatris or the cenotaphs have all been carved out of sandstone blocks but have been built in at least four different sizes for the ruling kings, their queens, their princes and the other royal family members. Each cenotaph has a marble slab with the inscription about the deceased royal. The best time to visit is at sunset or sunrise. And now we are at Gadisar Lake. It's a big lake. Uh, people can boat over here also and there is supposedly a light show. Let's see if we are going to watch it or not. Uh, we'll just uh, take a walk around the lake now. After watching the show for some time, we called it a day off and headed back to the hotel. Nikki, how is the food? It's good. Spicy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. None. Yeah. What about you? It's good. It's good I'm spicy. It's good. I'm excited about the ice cream. Good morning friends, it's day 2 or 3. I guess 3 we can call it because the first day we were just traveling. And right now we are going in for morning breakfast. It's pretty early, about 7 in the morning. So see you at the breakfast table. Before going to the breakfast buffet, just thought of uh, coming outside. And OMG, just look at the amount of fog in the weather. You can hardly see anything. And now we are checking out from this Chauki Dhani Palace Hotel. We are heading towards the camp in Jaisalmer. Do you like my hair? Yeah, she's having a Christmas Santa bow. Very cute. And this is the drawback of traveling with so much of luggage. Your bangle? Yeah. And I'm so excited for the camel ride. Mm. Christmas, happy Xmas. Oh yes, it is Christmas today. Merry Christmas to every one of you. And with that, our stay at Chauki Dhani Palace Hotel comes to an end. I would give it a 5 star review for its hospitality and the good food. The only thing, it was a bit spicy for us. And now we are at the Kulhara village. And now we are at the Kuldhara village. The story behind this village is like uh, all the villages 
one night they decided they'll desert this place and after that it they cursed it they cursed yes they cursed that no one can reside in this village anymore so it has become haunted but there's hardly anything to see it's just broken uh houses trusty two hair houses at some point of time i think yes neil interesting story though interesting story yeah there's more to it but it's a bit long they probably made it haunted by like bulldozing the builder like yeah to make it a bit haunted or maybe it's all just a story it seems that the head of the village uh, he had a daughter and uh, someone wanted to marry his daughter whom he didn't agree to and they seem to be pretty powerful and that is why just to escape from that they left the whole village and deserted it and then uh, yeah the curse after that that no one can live in this village and these are the remnants of that village left over so as you can see it stretches to a, through a pretty big place and now after the kulhara village we have come to another haunted place this is the khaba fort i'll just turn around and show it to you right behind me and yes we are going to enter it do you look at do you think i look cute Yes, very cute. So let's go in. And to enter, you have to pay a ticket of twenty dollars per person. Twenty. Oh yes, twenty rupees. So used to saying dollars. Khaba Fort dates back to the 13th century and was once an important part of the Kuldhara, a village inhabited by the Paliwal Brahmins. Sometimes during the 18th century, the residents fled the village and left behind a ghost town. Legend has it that tormented by the tyranny of Salim Singh, the Diwan of Jaisalmer, and his cruel tax collection methods, the thousand odd inhabitants of the village fled the place one night. They left behind all their possessions and disappeared into obscurity. No one knows where they settled. However, even as they left the village, they cursed the place that it should never again be inhabited by the people. And the curse has come true. The place is as deserted as it can be. Today, the place is a protected monument and is maintained by the Archaeological Survey of India. Khaba Fort used to be one of the focal points of the village, providing an uninterrupted view of the village below. The fort also has a museum which houses a collection of various artifacts that were found in and around the fort. Yes, Nikki. I don't really think so because it was never abandoned. What you don't think haunted? Yeah. It is abandoned. Like they had cursed the king also while leaving the village, so that is how it gradually diminished. Yeah. And there's my little man waving, and I'm at the top of the fort. A beautiful view of the whole desert. I'll actually turn the camera and show you all. As you can see, it's all deserted. Oh, you walk across to get there. And this is a 900-year-old idol which is still worshipped. and after the khaba fort now we are at our campsite this is called the le royal camps it looks pretty interesting it's built like a fort it's amazing excited yeah yeah it's going to be my first time trying this okay let's go in And this is our camp room. A cute little tent. So the beds here and there's a dressing table and another extra bed and a sitting area which is basically covered with all our luggages. Yes, we have a lot of luggage. 
and here is the toilet the toilet is also pretty decent and that's our room for tonight the camp room and we'll have some good glamping funs yes yeah and we'll do some fun activities now so stay tuned and keep watching fun activity number one bed test yeah it's pretty soft it's a bit harder than the other ones but it's a good bed don't forget to check out my channel ariana's room so you've changed your name yeah a billion times Best just thing. found the right one i think i should change it into ariana's place or what they're so big they're literally so big it's like Hi. Now we are on the camel. Vicky, say hi. Hi. It is a kind of. It is fun actually. Initially, it was very scary. And we are in the desert now. After the camel ride, how was it? It was good. It was scary at first, but once uh, you get, get used to it, it's very fun. And there's Arindam. Enjoy the camel ride. Now this time you're going in front. Okay. I was never scared. No, Papa, you can't choose. Anyways, I was never scared. are sliding down the sand dunes it is really beautiful over here and we are waiting for the sunset to happen after some amazing experience in the sand dunes the rather the sam sand dunes now we are heading back uh, if you can see the sun has almost set it was a beautiful experience and a must have if you are visiting this part of the world Now it's time for some evening snacks. No. And after the camel ride, we are really hungry, and we are just hogging on to food now. <laughs> And this is the night view of our camp. It looks really gorgeous with all the lights lit up on the path. Yeah, and Nikki is dancing. It's beautiful. And this is the stage where the performance happened yesterday night and we were sitting somewhere over here. Okay. 
and friends this is our campsite we had a lovely night yesterday with all the traditional dance and singing and now it is time for us to say goodbye to the camp and our next destination is jodhpur so see you there and there's my two little monkeys relaxing in the front space or front yard you can say Yes, so did you all have a good time here in the camp? Great, five yes. stars. Five stars review? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, and what was the best part about the camp? Camel ride. Camel ride, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, that was a, not the part of the camp, it was part of the safari. Camp. What about the camp? The camp, the dinner was good, the, the food was, was good. nice, it was um, different, it was. Not your average hotel experience. It's exactly. Mm -hmm. Two things. When my mom screamed at the in the camel ride, and when there was cats on top of our um, tent roof. Yeah, that's cool. Mm. 